Welcome to the IPv6 uh, internet tutorial. My name is John Burns and I'm a network engineer with Exile Technologies. And we're here today to talk a little bit about Internet Protocol version 6, what it is, why you should be thinking about it, and how it's going to affect uh, intranetworks and networks in the, in the short to medium term. IPv6 is on the horizon. It's not going away. It's going to make a, it's going to become a bigger and bigger uh, problem for those administrators that don't understand it. And, uh, and we're here hopefully to uh, do a quick introduction and, and get you comfortable with seeing the addresses, using them, understanding how, how addressing works in IPv6. And uh, at the end of this series, we're going to do some hands-on with some Server 2008 uh, computers, and we're going to build a IPv6 only Active Directory domain, deploy it, and, uh, and learn a little bit about how it works and how it's going to affect uh, system administration in the future. Okay, so this is the Internet Protocol version 6 uh, video, and we're going to talk a little bit about what is IPv6. It looks like a small, very unimposing uh, table of contents there, but there is quite a bit to it. Uh, it is very simple once you take it piece, one piece at a time, uh, but it is quite different from IPv4. Um, and in case you're wondering, it, uh, there is no IPv5. Internet Protocol 5 is a... Uh, it was a experimental protocol, a real-time type streaming protocol that never made it to production, and that's why it's called IPv6. Uh, you know, if you're like a lot of people, you probably figure IPv6 is pretty much the same. We're just going to add a couple, couple more subnets, a uh, couple more octets to it, and uh, and you know, just have six octets instead of uh, four. But it is quite different. It's not an extension. It's not a superset of IPv4. It's actually a completely different. Um, completely different protocol and uh, so that creates its own set of problems uh, luckily for us the developers of IPv6 have put a lot of thought into coexistence with IPv4 and to migration strategies and towards the end of this video series we'll talk a little bit about that uh, there's a couple different strategies for deploying IPv6 on the campus wide network and also uh, migrating to that and it's 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 each approach has its pluses and minuses, and um, we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, so let's uh, let's get right into it here. Then let's talk about what is IP version six. Uh, Internet Protocol version six is a network layer for packet switch internetworks, which is pretty much what IPv4 is. Uh, it's the successor of IPv4. Um, and the main change brought by IPv6 is a much larger address space, a really, really, really large address space. Um, although it, the address space is very, very large, it is quite different from IV, IPv4. It is a hierarchical uh, addressing scheme, which simplifies aggregation and routers and adds a lot more uh, management capabilities and streamlines uh, r uh, routes and routing protocols. And it really does make it easier for routers to to aggregate these addresses. Uh, if you've, if anyone's ever seen a BGP table on a, on a production Cisco router or Juniper router, you know that uh, the BGP table is quite large with lots and lots of routes. And uh, IPv6 had to go about uh, organizing addresses a little differently because the address space is so much larger that you know, it had to be done a more efficient way. So that's why they chose to go with a hierarchical way of doing that. Uh, and it also adds some other features. Uh, you know, as you know, um, uh, IPv6 is really, really large. And uh, it's 2 to the 128 hosts, uh, basically addresses. Uh, and, and you can take that and convert it to a decimal. It's about 3.4 to 10 times 10 to the 38 addresses. Uh, and that's a lot of addresses. It's uh, it's from a different perspective. It's 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 two to the 52 addresses for every star in the known universe. That's quite a few addresses, or more than 10 billion 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 times as many addresses uh, as IPv4 supports. So it's quite large. And um, 
the larger number of addresses solves a couple different things uh, that we've been uh, fighting with. You know, IPv6 isn't really new, it's just been stalled for a while, and one of the reasons why it kind of stalled was because we've patched up IPv4 so much uh, that it kind of lost steam for a while. So if you remember in the early 90s, it was we're running out of addresses, we're running out of addresses, we need to develop IPv4, IPv6, and uh, you know, but we, we, we came out with uh, network address translation uh, and uh, classless subnetting and that really allowed us to extend uh, the life of IPv4 uh, quite a while and so the steam and the push behind IPv6 sort of died off well it, it's it's sort of coming back because those patches have sort of run their course uh, if you go to uh, the IPv6 working forms uh, they have a clock of when they expect the North American address space to run out and it's uh, somewhere around 2010, 2011 plus or minus a year depending on uh, on the date the 9-11 uh, uh, catastrophe really slowed down that a little bit we were supposed to run out sooner up until then but I guess business slowed a little bit and they've extended it their deadline and uh, so so IPv6 gives us a lot more addresses and, and, and because we have so many more addresses uh, it's sort of a different world with IPv6 uh, you, you know with IPv4 you basically everybody runs NAT on your say your home network or even your business network it's all private addresses uh, inside your business network and then you probably have some sort of NAT router whether it's port address translation or just network address translation that translates your private addresses into your one uh, you know public address for the internet or your subnet depending on how many addresses your company owns and uh, with IPv6 that's no longer really necessary there are so many addresses that there will be in no time soon uh, really any reason to run anything like NAT uh, for IPv6 other than the security that's provided by it there are a couple uh, different forms of NAT for IPv6 that have already been uh, worked on uh, Cisco has one called NAT PT uh, which addresses that, but those are mo mostly developed as a migration strategy uh, for IPv6, and we'll talk about that a little bit uh, towards the end of these videos. Uh, but anyways, there are a large number uh, of addresses, um, and basically what happens is uh, we have, they've, they've organized IPv6 in a way that makes it more efficient to distribute addresses. With IPv4, the way you know the way the addresses were distributed and the way they were used you know there are a couple big companies such as Ford that have 16 million address space that's their address space that they own is 16 million so while the world at large is running out of IP uh, v4 addresses there are companies that there's no way Ford Motor Company or some of the other fortune 500 companies a lot of them actually own their own 16 million uh, address space size network subnets they own those subnets and there really is no way they could use all those uh, and so these early companies and even governments that bought these large address spaces, especially the United States, there really hasn't been a push to move to IPv6 uh, because of the large addresses, the, the large address space that's been uh, set aside for the United States government and for this region of the world in general, partly because the Department of Defense Advanced Research uh, division invented the internet or had it played a, a large part in inventing the internet uh, at least IP uh, the, the IP protocol so understandably they got the lion's share of the addresses that were available and so that's why IPv6 really hasn't had a great push like it has uh, in other parts of the world there's a lot bigger uptake right now in China and in other parts of the country that had very few addresses pro proportionate to the size of their population so that's really why we're moving to IPv6. The other thing that's really interesting is the address space is so large for any subnet. There's a 64-bit subnet mask uh, on a lot of common uh, addresses. So you're talking about the address space is so large that it really makes port scanning quite inefficient because there's so many millions of hosts on every, and even the smallest subnets that basically it's 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 kind of back to the old 1980s term security through obscurity, where if you hide it well enough, you don't have to secure it. Uh, so it does offer that. It makes port scanning today as we know it impractical, uh, which adds a, l a lot of security to the